Hi everyone, my name is Anna. I own Zoom Groom. I have gotten a lot of requests for a video on how I do my whole grooming process. So I recruited little Miss Molly May here um, to help me with this video. So I've been grooming Molly for about five years. She's a little Bichon mix and she's just the perfect little model. Um, she gets a little round head and she gets a short body and scissored legs. So I figured it would be, be a good haircut to show you guys how I do a little round head and, and longer legs. So um, I hope you enjoy this video and um, I hope to uh, film a lot more. Thank you. First things first, we have to mix some shampoos. Here at the salon, we use Best Shot Ultramax Pro Shampoo and Conditioner. It's our, it's our salon favorite. Um, we typically mix about two pumps from this bottle into our little mixing bottles. We get our mixing bottles from, you can use Top Performance or Groomer's Choice. Um, there's all kinds of different places that sell these bottles. Um, so we use two pumps per bottle of shampoo. And then we also do two pumps of conditioner and then we add the rest water. So when I start the bathing process I wet the dog down um, and I use my first shampoo. Um, I scrub it in. I only use my hands. I don't have a bathing system or anything like that. Um, I shampoo the whole dog thoroughly and then I do the first rinse and then we apply the second shampoo. Um, I only shampoo the body and then I use blueberry facial on the head, and then we condition all over.
Now that she's all bathed and towel dried, we now apply our finishing sprays. The most common one that we use is Best Shot Ultra Max Finishing Spray. We just put it in a Groomer's Choice spray bottle um, or any type of spray bottle, but we like this one. And I also use Ice on Ice by Chris Christensen. Um, this you have to use a little bit lighter. It, um, it is, I buy the ready to use, so it's already diluted and everything. I just use it as is, um, but I don't spray it on too heavy. For drying, we use the Canine 3 dryer. Uh, for dogs with longer hair uh, and curly coats, I typically use this attachment nozzle. Um, and then for the head, we take the attachment nozzle off and just use um, just the dryer.
Now that she's all dried and clean, um, she still has a lot of tangles and needs to be fluffed out. So now is when I brush and comb and get all of, all of her hair nice and ready for clipping. My favorite brush is a brush made by um, Viento and I bought it at Ryan's Pet Supplies. It has very long, soft pins. It's good for getting you know, through this thick curly coat. Then I go through with my Paw Brothers brush. Um, it's, you can tell the pins are a lot shorter. The pins are a little stiffer. Um, and then I go through with my Chris Christensen comb.
So next up, um, I do the paw pads, nails, and sanitary. The clipper I use is the Pulse ZR2. It's made by Andis. Um, it is one of my favorite clippers that I've had. I've pretty much only had Andis clippers. Um, I've tried a couple Osters, tried a couple Walls, um, but Andis is usually the brand that I, I stick with. Um, I also use the Andis Ultra Edge 40 uh, for paw pads, and I use the Andis Ultra Edge 10 for the sanitaries. Next, I will be dremeling her nails. I use the Dremel brand Micro Dremel for the nails. Um, it's quiet, it's cordless. Um, they are pretty fragile. They do break quite often, um, but it is one of my favorite Dremels. All right, so the next step is clipping her down. Um, Molly is pretty short on her body already, so I'm not gonna take a lot of length off of her body. Um, we're just gonna kind of focus on her legs today. I'm going to use my number one, it's a half inch wall clip comb on her body. And um, I will be using my inch and a quarter Oster clip comb for her legs. Um, I'm just going to be skimming it and then mostly scissoring. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with that.
So you'll notice as I was clipping, I was taking my clipper and I was falling off the hip. Um, that's just to set me up so I have longer legs. I can transition from a short body to long legs. So I just take my clipper and as I'm going down the hip, I just start to come off of, I start to take the clipper off the dog. Um, and that just helps transition from the short hair to the long hair. Um, I do that on the hip and I do that on the shoulder. I'll fall off the shoulder to set myself up for long legs. So next I'm going to be clipping down the legs with my Oster inch and a quarter clip comb. I'm going to be taking the legs down on the sides and then I'm going to be coming on the back, but I'm not really going to do much on the front of the foot. I will take a little bit on the front of the leg, but not much on the front of the hawk and the foot. Same on the front leg. I'm going to be taking off the side, the back, but I'm not going to take much off the front half of the leg. So next we're going to be scissoring the body and the legs. We don't have to do too much scissoring on the body, but we're mainly going to focus on the legs. I usually start by trimming the feet. Um, I like to use my Chris Christensen cones. Um, this one is really good for just general use. Um, it has a little bit of space between the teeth, um, but I really like this half moon comb. It's really good at picking up the hair on the feet, um, so I you know, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, and then I also use my Kenshi Shinobi straights. Um, that's usually what I scissor with um, for a straight shear. Um, I also use um, the Kenshi Five Star Curve. Um, that's my favorite curve. Um, someday I'd like to get a Shinobi, but for now I have a Five Star. And uh, my American Sharpening Chunker. Um, you can see it has very wide spaces between the teeth. Um, that's very good for getting big bolts of hair out. Um, I am a left-handed groomer, um, so all of my tools are left-handed. Um, it's very hard to find left-handed tools, um, but all of these companies make them and I love all of their products. Um, I also use this Chris Christensen comb. It's uh, very small, as you can see, but it has very wide spaces between the teeth. So it's very nice for fluffing up these these types of legs. Um, so you will see me using this quite a bit today. Um, so I usually start with the back foot. Um, this is my half moon comb. I comb all of the hair down. Um, comb all of the hair down. You can see this hair that overhangs on the feet. So I usually get the back nice and tight. And then I get the sides. I try and line them up with the paw pad so that the hair is even going out from the paw pad out to the edge of the foot. And do that on all the sides and I take just a little bit off the front. So when you set the foot down, you can see I created a nice angle here. 
and that will set us up for nice pillar legs. So next I'll take my, my general Chris Christensen comb. I'm gonna comb all the hair down. I'm gonna take just a little bit off the tip of the foot. Um, typically I use the nails as a guide, the middle two nails, um, but her nails are so short that um, I don't really have to worry about the nails showing, so I'm just gonna use my own my own length here. I make the, the front of the foot nice and flat. Um, and so you can kind of see how flat the front is. And then I try and connect this back angle with the flat front. Um, so I just very, very lightly take the sides down following a circle. And I also kind of watch the bottom edge here. Want to make sure that there's no hair sticking down on the bottom. I like to come up just a tad on the inside. So there you can see we have a nice a nice foot started there. So that's typically about all I do for the feet. To start, um, I don't take anything off the top or the front of the, the hawk here because I want to leave that nice and full. Um, I want to leave that nice and full so that it creates a nice pillar leg there. Um, so next I'm going to be scissoring the leg. So I typically start up at the top and I work my way down, kind of connecting this hip to the bottom of the leg. I usually break my leg up in sections. I do that. I do the outside of the leg, I do the back of the leg, the front of the leg, and then the inside of the leg. So I usually work on each section separately. And then in the end, the whole leg comes together. Next, I'm gonna do the front of the leg. Um, I want to make sure that there's nice angulation in the rear, so I'm not gonna take a ton off the front. Um, I'm just gonna focus on the tuck up area where it connects with the, the body there. I'm always careful that I don't take too much and that I scissor in very short, continuous strokes to get all the little guys so that your lines are nice and sharp. Just getting the little baby hairs. And 
And then I'm going to work on the back of the leg. Now you want to create, she already has some angulation from the last groom, but you want to create some nice angulation in the rear. Um, so what I typically do for that is I take, um, sometimes I'll take a clip comb in here. I usually use the spot where the leg bends um, as, my, as my goal spot um, to put the angulation. Um, so yeah, sometimes I'll use a clip comb. I'll just scoop out a little bit in there. Sometimes I'll use my chunker. Um, for her, I'm gonna use my chunker just because her leg is so short. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna set my hip here. I'm gonna make a nice flat top. You can see kind of where the, the point of her hip should be here. Um, so I'm gonna make a nice flat top and I'm gonna make a nice flat top there and then I'm gonna come down and set myself up for the angulation. I don't want my hip to be too sharp. Here's where I'm going to take my chunker. You want to stop before you get into the hawk. Okay, so we're going to work on this back of the hawk. I usually try and follow this, the hip point that I made down um, into the hawk. So I'm just going to take this straight down. to work on the inside of the leg a little bit just to you know, make that um, the angulation a little bit more pronounced. I usually pick the leg up and I scissor this little spot in here. And that is the back leg. So then I go ahead and I scissor kind of just tidy up the body, the back and the, the tummy. Um, so I usually just use short little close scissoring here just to get all the little hairs just to make it nice and nice and clean. Um, she did have surgery right here, so there's a little bit of a hole in her coat there. We're not taking a lot off, we're just kind of cleaning it up. 
making it all nice and tidy. So then with the tuck up spot, um, it's good to leave a little bit of hair in there. So I'm just gonna kind of barely clean it up in there. Just keeping a nice angle, keeping the curve of her body. Um, I like to take the underline up a little bit, make them look a little, a little more um, thin. <laughs> and so I'm gonna take that in just a bit. I'm using my curved shear here. That's about all I do for the side. Um, Make sure you blend the underneath up into the into the body. Um, with her, it's not as big of a deal because she's pretty short, um, but some dogs, it requires a little bit more. So now I'm gonna move on to the front leg. Um, I like to start up at the shoulder. I like to just kind of tidy up the, the shoulder area and then um, kind of bring it over into the chest a little bit. Okay, so we're also going to start with the foot on the front leg. Again, I'm gonna grab my half moon comb. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna comb all the hair down. And then we're gonna cut the back of this foot nice and flat. I'm gonna take it up just a little tad. And then we're gonna take the sides of these feet nice and flat with the pads. She's got little curls on the bottom of her feet. So the front leg isn't as obvious with the curve on the back as the as the back leg, but um, we just follow the same steps. We're gonna go ahead and take the front of the foot down nice and flat. Again, her nails are very short, so we're not really gonna use her nails as the guide. We're just gonna we're just gonna pick the spot um, that looks like it fits the best. So now that it's nice and flat, we're going to um, we're going to connect the back to the side or back to the front. We're going to get the side here. And make sure that we get underneath here. Again, we're just going to connect it from the back to the front. Make sure 
where we're getting underneath a little bit. I like to take the side up a little bit as we did on the back leg. It tends to just get really thick right there. All right, now we're ready to start scissoring the leg. I take my little comb and I fluff up her leg and I'm gonna be connecting the shoulder to the base of the foot. I'm not taking a ton off the leg. Um, again, I, I break my leg out into sections for the outside, front, back, and inside of the leg. Next, I'm gonna do the, the front of the leg. I don't take a ton off. I wanna keep a nice pillar look to the leg. So I'm just gonna, I usually keep the tip of my scissor aimed to the outer edge of the foot um, to make sure that I don't cut in too far. You just kind of connect everything. Sometimes you'll get little hairs on the feet, little that'll appear, so we'll trim those as you go. Now we're gonna work on the back of the leg. Um, you wanna keep, I don't trim much back here because we already trimmed that when we did the foot. So I'm just going to um, take the top and middle and connect it to the bottom. All right, and then I just take the inside of the leg. See if I can turn her here. So I usually pick, come here Molly, pick the leg up and I fluff the hair up and I just connect it from the front to the back get any little hairs sticking out. And then when I set it down, I kind of just do the same. Just get any little hairs popping out. And as you change angles and you're trimming, as you change angles and you're trimming different parts of the leg, um, you'll see different hairs um, because we weren't looking at the outside from this angle. There will be hairs on the outside that you'll see, so it's good to trim all parts of the leg as you're going around it. Here's where I like to kind of connect the chest, underbelly. Into the, into the front leg armpit area there.
And that's the front leg. I'll turn her here.
Oh, the mailman tried to get in.
So with Molly's head, we're just going to do a round head. We're not going to do a traditional Bajan head. Um, and her mom likes her head pretty big. Um, she likes her ears in between. Um, she doesn't like them real long, but not shaved. Um, and then she does like her chin nice and short, and she likes her eye corners cleaned out good. So, um, so we're going to be doing all of that today. I'm going to be taking my Oster inch and a half over the top of her head. Um, her hair is pretty long right now, so I'm just going to bring it down a bit and leave her cheeks nice and full. Um, I usually work back to front. And I'm just going to take it front to back once or twice. All right, and then I am going to be taking a clip comb over her ears. Um, I'm going to try five eighths of an inch. I'm going to find her ear here and then just. Run my clip comb over the top. Okay, next I'm going to be cleaning out her eye corners. So I'm going to be using the number 10 Andis Ultra Edge um, blade on her eye corners just because her mom likes them extra cleaned out. Um, normally I would probably thin in here, but, but because her mom likes them cleaned out, we're going to use the 10 blade. I'm going to go in with my curve shear and any of these little hairs that I missed, I can clean up with my scissor here. I also like to clean out kind of this little area right kind of above the eye, kind of part of the eye corner, um, just, to, just to open their eyes up a little bit more. Um, so then... Next, we're going to work on her bangs. Um, I like to push the majority of the hair back and then just kind of focus on the immediate eye area. Um, this is my Gybe Gator Thinner. Um, it is a 40 tooth. It's also left-handed. Um, I like to use this right next to the eyes just so it's a little bit softer than if I were to go in with my curved shear. Um, so I try and separate the hair from the bottom of the eye here and I just lightly thin out above the eye. So you can tell, you know, we cleaned up all these little hairs over here, so her face is a little bit more open here. And then I kind of go into the, the top of the head. The way that I blend from the, the thin spot into using my curves is I use my blenders. So I just go straight up from the eyes. And I do a lot of fluffing while I do this, but I go straight up from the eyes just to uh, blend it up into the top of the head here. So then when you look from the side, um, when you look from the side, there's no hair that's uh, hanging down. It's all, it all just blends nicely into the top of the head. 
Um, then I am going to work with my curve shear and some of my chunker on the top of the head. So this, I'm just going to be going around. I already took my length off with the clip comb, so we don't need to worry about taking length off. We're just rounding the head. Um, I usually start right above the ear, and then I go to the middle and to the other ear, and then I kind of bounce around from there. Just working on the front right now, or front and top. I'm not worrying about the back. So then when you look from the front, you can see I have a nice round top of the head. It's all nice and even. Molly doesn't like to put her head down very much. So we're just gonna slowly bring her down. And then I like to work on the back. This, I'm just kind of connecting the neck into the back of the head. I don't, um, her mom doesn't do a crest or anything, so, um, so we just kind of blend it as best as we can. just going to use my chunkers to just blend, kind of soften my, my edges there. I'm going to brush back a little bit just because it's going to be some hairs that'll appear. And then I'm going to slowly work my way back forwards. And all while I change the angles of where I'm looking, where her head is, so that I do my best to get every little hair. Mm -hmm. Helps having the natural light coming in from the front. It illuminates some of these little guys. Mm Okay, now we're going to move into the side of her face. I'm gonna pull her ear back just a bit. Um, so I usually use the ear canal as a guide. I take my scissor directly down from the ear canal, kind of clear that spot out. I set my jaw, the back of the ear. Mm 
which I'm then using the back of the head to kind of come down and set my jawline. Then I like to use my chunker right on the side of the face here, just so I don't get too many harsh lines. Then I like to use my chunker to come in and connect the, the muzzle here. I don't usually take too much off the muzzle, but I just like to keep it one nice continuous line there. And then I comb it all down and I take my curved shear and I start from the little nose here and I kind of scissor it short. And then I go and I connect it back to my jawline back to the back of the head and the ear and all that. kind of fluff up a little bit, but I don't want to trim too much because I don't want to take too much off or make too many harsh lines. So you can see there, we got a nice flat little round head there. Um, so then next I'm gonna take my little half moon comb and I'm gonna get these little tiny lip hairs here. The ones that they just kind of look they look a little dirty and they get in their mouth, so I'm just gonna take that down a little bit. Make sure I got all the all the little hidden lip hairs there. And if you remember, I said that mom likes her chin really nice and short. Um, so I'm actually going to take a clip comb over her chin just to make sure I get it short enough. Um, I'm going to start with 5 eighths. I might go down a little bit shorter. Just kind of see how much it takes off here. I think that's pretty good. We can scissor, scissor the rest there. So... I'm going to take my scissor, my curve shear here, and just kind of clean up under here. And then I'm going to take my chunker and blend it all. Since we took some of the jawline down there with the chin, we're just going to go back and clean that up. And then we got one half of the face done. So now I'm going to move on to the ear on this side. I already took it down with the, with the 5 eighths of an inch. So all I'm going to do is just kind of take my, take my chunker here and I'm just going to Lightly go around the edges. And then I'm going to go back with my curved shear and clean it up. And then I'm going to take the front down just a teensy weensy bit with my chunker. And then clean it up with my curve. So that ear is all done. She kind of has little airplane ears there, but that's okay. So 
So then here you can see we have half the face done and half of it still to do. Um, so we have uh, the jaw nice there, the chin short, and yeah, it's a nice little round head. Mm-hmm. <laughs>